Hi, I'll show you how you can easily imitate such a button in Figma. The actual idea came from Aaron, who built the button. Feel free to check him out. Okay, let's get started. Start by opening a new design file. To do this, go to the Figma icon in the top left, then File and then click on New Design File. Now a new project window opens, which you can name. With a click on the third icon or the shortcut F, the frame panel opens. Here you have the possibility to select different screen sizes and devices. For the button, I simply use the iPhone 13 Pro Max. To create a button now, we simply use the rectangle tool. You can also find this on the top left or use the shortcut R. Once you've selected it, just drag it over your frame with the left mouse button. You can control the size via the corners or in the settings on the right. To make the button look even more real, we need to make a few settings. For this we use the options on the right side. First we should center the rectangle. You have the option to do this here. I adjust the size a little bit and want rounded corners. For this I can enter here how rounded the corners should be. I use a value of 10. To give the whole thing a nicer look, I adjust the color. For this I click it fill on the colored box and can select so simply my color. At last I give the button a drop shadow effect. For this I click on the plus in effects. Over this symbol further settings can be made. Now only the text on our button is missing. Just press T on your keyboard or select the text icon in the upper left corner. Now just click on the place where you want the text to appear and start writing. I just write like. Now we have on the right side the possibility to make settings in the text. Just choose a suitable font and font size. I have chosen Lolita 1 and size 30. To get the text in the center of the button we select both and use the option in the upper right corner again. With this we center the font vertically and horizontally to the button. Now I find that the orange area is a bit too big. Therefore, I adjust the size again. Here we go. Perfect. Now we have a button that we can animate. First of all, we duplicate our iPhone frame. Click on the name of the frame and duplicate it with Ctrl plus D. We would like it to look like it was pressed when you click on our button. To do this, the button in our second frame must be made a little smaller. Select the orange rectangle and reduce it only a few pixels. To do this evenly, hold Alt plus Shift while dragging the corners. Now we should see if the animation looks good. To do this, switch to prototype on the right side. To create an animation, we have to connect both frames. To do this, click on our button in the first iPhone frame. Now a small dot should appear to the right of it. Drag and drop this onto the new frame to create the connection. Now the interaction details field opens. Here you leave the upper settings. At the bottom you select the field smart animate instead of instant. This is important to get a nice animation. To test the animation now just click on the play button on the top right. Now you can test your button. When you click on it now, the animation will be played. You can now make further adjustments by going back to the edit page and clicking on the link line. I want to make the animation a bit faster and select 100 milliseconds instead of 300 milliseconds. Also, I use the value ease out back. But you can decide for yourself what you find best. Just try something out. Now we want to create the effect that the hands appear. To do this, I duplicate the first frame again and delete the animation. For the icons and emoticons I use the plugin Iconify, which you can call up in the upper left corner via the resources icon. Here you can search and use all icons. I searched four hands and use this one for our project. Now we need to split the emoticon. To do this, simply double click on the icon to activate editing. I now delete the parts of the right hand so that only one remains. In the next step, I duplicate the left hand and flip it horizontally by right-clicking on the item. Now we should name the hands properly, so that our later animation works correctly. Left hand and right hand is enough here. 
Now move the hands to the left and right of the text inside the button. To get a nice effect later on, the hands should be made smaller and maybe rotated a bit. Finally, we set the opacity to 0% to make the hands invisible. Here we go, now we have to duplicate this frame. After you have done that select the invisible hands again, set the opacity to 100% and scale the size as you want it. Now we want the hands to move towards each other. To do this, we duplicate this frame again and move the two hands to the center so that they meet there. Make sure that the hands are in the foreground. To do this, select the hands and use the right click option bring to front. To make the lettering disappear, we select it and set the opacity to zero. Nice, now we have a high five. To make the new text appear, it must be created on this frame. Press T on your keyboard to write a new text. I go with liked. Use the same font and size here. At last we set the opacity to 0%. Make sure that the new text is aligned vertically and horizontally again. Now we create a circle. Press the small arrow next to the square symbol and select the circle. Now drag it onto the button and center it as well. As color I choose a red-orange. You can choose your color freely. Set the size of the circle to 2 and set the opacity back to 0%. Okay, as we have just seen, the hands are not perfectly centered. So select right underscore hand and left underscore hand one after the other with the orange area and use the center vertically button. Now, we can duplicate this frame as well. Now comes the last step. Click on the orange shape and duplicate it. Now select the circle from the current frame and set the opacity to 100%. Change the size until the circle fills the button completely. If the circle is big enough, we select the new shape in the circle and right-click on Use as Mask. It is important that the circle is in the foreground. Last, we take the text liked on the left side in the layer overview and drag it to the top of the frame. Now we set the opacity to 100%. To continue with the animation, select the prototype options on the right. Now we just need to create an automatic animation for each frame. To do this, go to the second frame that has not yet received an animation. Click on the name of the frame so that the small circle right in the middle appears. Drag it to the next frame. Now you should automatically see the interaction details. First select after delay. There you enter one millisecond. The animation type is again smart animate. Feel free to test the transitions yourself to find your preferences. Repeat these steps for each frame. I set the duration of the last animation to 400 milliseconds to improve the animation. Now we have to ungroup the resulting mask group in the last frame. So select it and click on ungroup. Perfect! Now try the animation by starting it with the play button in the upper right corner. I hope I could help you. Try to build on it and develop new cool ideas. I am happy about your comment. You can also save the video by giving it a like. See you next time. Bye.